Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So this is, um, if you've just come to this video, this is a three-part series on writing a paper on advertising to children. So if you haven't watched the other two videos, I highly encourage you to go back and watch those before you get started in this one. In this particular video, we are going to finish out our topic by talking about citing sources, particularly with making quotations and putting those quotations in our paper. So uh, it's not always appropriate to use quotations. It's much more common to use paraphrases when you're writing a paper, but we will leave that for another time. Today, we'll just focus on if you're going to quote, how do you do it? So um, we, when we use quotations, we do so when the language is the very powerful or it's too specific to paraphrase. Yeah, you, you um, quote for sources that you're reading directly. You do not quote ideas that a source takes from another quote. So that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, if you're reading something and they tell you about research from somewhere else, don't quote that. Go to that source directly and then paraphrase or quote. All right, so how do you use quotations? There are a few things that you need. You need the author or the authors and the publication year. You need to use quotation marks so we know that these are the exact words that they said. You need a page number and of course the exact words as they are written in the source, okay? Um, I will mention at this point that there is if you need to change the words, um, like a pronoun so that the sentence flows better, um, you use brackets. We'll leave that for another time. Today, I'll just focus on put them in quotation marks and have it ex read exactly the same. But do know that if you need to change like a little pronoun um, so that the sentence makes sense altogether, you use brackets. You can look that up later um, if that's something that you're going to do. So we call this language of attribution, and it's a way that we give credit to the people who had the ideas, who published the research. Okay, so here is here are two ways that we might see quotations being used. We might have according to author or authors, then the year, comma, then the quotation, and a page number. And just notice here where the comma is and the period goes outside of the page number. It does not go here, okay? Same here. If we want to open and with the sentence with the authors and we want to make them the subject, so here they'd be the subject, then we need a verb. We need to have a reporting verb, and I'll talk about what that means. We need to have a reporting verb, then comes our comma, then our quotation, page number, period there, okay? So here are a couple examples that show you how this looks. So this was that source that I mentioned in our first video. And I've mentioned the author's last names, then I have the year of the publication, and then this whole part is my quote, and then I have a page number and my period here. Um, oops, sorry. Notice that there's my comma right there. And same thing here. Maybe instead of according to, I want to use the authors as the subject. So they're the subject. Then I have my reporting verb. I have a comma. Oh, sorry, I keep doing that. And then um, my quotation, my page number, and my period goes there. All right, so reporting verbs. Uh, when you have a sentence like this one, where your authors are the subject, you need to have a reporting verb. And sorry, that keeps going off. Let's go. Go. Okay. You need to have different reporting verbs. So depending on 
depending on what you're trying to say, you need to think about the meaning of your quotation. So if you are presenting a recommendation, if you're reading something and the authors recommend that you do something, maybe you use the word suggest. You wouldn't use the word conclude, okay? So, or what if your authors Ah, they found something in their study. They find, they report. Do they propose? No, if you're talking about what they found, report, find, maybe conclude if it's their ultimate conclusion. So that's what I mean about you need to think about the meaning of the quotation. Does your quotation report a finding? offer a suggestion, make a conclusion, does it provide an observation? So it's very important at this stage that you think uh, about what the source actually says so you don't misrepresent what you're, what you're reading. Uh, this is another example that I found on Creative Commons um, that shows a part of a quotation. Again, you have your author, you have your date, then um, your words. Oh, I'm gonna mark this as our reporting verb. Um, this part here, this is kind of like a summary of what the source was saying. Uh, and then we have our quote, okay? And we have our page number there, our period here, and no period here. All right, so those, uh, these are called uh, in-text citations. They are, and in-text citations can be quotations, they can be paraphrases, they can be summaries, uh, but the point is that they all happen within your paper. At the end of your paper, you have something called a reference page or a works cited page. So if you're writing uh, APA documentation style, you're gonna have references. That's what your page will have at the top. If you're using MLA, you're gonna have something called works cited. So which documentation style? This is a part where you look at your writing assignment sheet and see what your teacher has uh, specified on your writing assignment. Um, typically, if you're in education or psychology or sciences, medicine, nursing, uh, these, these disciplines typically use APA. I did APA because I was in education. The humanities, and that includes like English, religion, philosophy, classics, they typically use MLA. Um, and then Chicago is often used by business, history, and fine arts. Uh, and each of them has a little bit different way of doing it. Chicago's a lot different than the way MLA and APA work. Uh, but so what I'm gonna focus on is APA. Um, and engineering I find funny. I, I Every now and then I ask an engineer, hey, what documentation style do you use? And they're like, uh, you know, kind of what anyone, whatever anyone feels like or whatever the journal feels like doing. Um, I asked my husband and he says, yeah, I mean, it's really, it depends on the publisher. So there's not one particular style that engineers say we all use this style. All right, so formatting uh, for, for a reference page, what does it look like? Uh, this particular image comes from Creative Commons. I think it's a pretty good one that shows a references page. So first thing to note here, this is the page number of the paper. So wow, this is a 17 page paper and you thought you had a lot to write. Uh, and then up here is a short um, abbreviated title of the work. This, it, you'll always have the word references at the top 
and it's centered, it's not bold, it's not underlined, okay? And then you have your sources here, not with a one, not with a two, and they're alphabetized. That's how we know the order. They're alphabetized. It's not the order that they appear in the paper either. That's Chicago. Chicago does that. But APA uses the, the alpha, by alphabetizing the last name of the author is the order that the references show up. So all of the sources on this paper appeared in the uh, in-text citations. Any in-text citation needs to be on this reference list, okay? So our margins here, these are probably one inch. And notice that this line is out and this line is in. And that is called a hanging indent, okay? If you're not sure how to do that, go to YouTube, put in how to make a hanging indent. It'll show you. I guarantee you someone's made a video about that. Um, our spacing, we have double spaced, okay? If you are doing this in Word, you just highlight the whole text and press Control-2 and it'll double space everything. That's a 2, that's not a Z. <laughs> Now that I look at it, it looks like a Z, but that's a two. And what else? I think that's it. Um, I do have a website for you to go to that will tell you exactly how to organize each of these or how to um, put the information into each reference here. So I'm just gonna point out, you have the author's name, the year, the, this is a book, it's a title of a book, the place of publication, and the publisher. This one here is an article in a journal because we see the title of the journal, then we see a title of the article, volume, issue, and then pages. And I can recognize this very easily because I have used APA for years. I do not expect you to be able to look at that and know what, what all of those words and numbers mean, which is why you have awesome websites like Purdue's Online Writing Lab. This is a phenomenal resource. Um, I am also going to include this, uh, this link and uh, links to other videos um, to watch in the description of this video. And this particular source, let's just go there now for just a moment so you can see it. All right, so here is Purdue Online Writing Lab as it appears right now. Um, when you go to research and citation here, you'll see that you can ah, look up APA style. And there's an introduction and then an overview and workshop formatting. Maybe you just want some ex examples. I wanna look at a basic rules for the reference list. Um, oh, that's this is actually not part of the online writing lab. It's a citation machine. Just know that if you use that, it's probably gonna take you somewhere else. Um, so you have your basic rules and then they will give you examples. So let's look at articles and, period and periodicals. So there's your um, basic example right here. And then they break it down into all the different kinds. And um, I'll be honest with you, I had to look at style guides like this anytime I wrote a paper. This is not something that people learn so easily. So it is totally okay for you to use style guides like this to make sure that you get the format just right. All right, and that brings us to our very end for this series on advertising to children. So if you uh, have questions or comments about this particular topic, you wanna float an idea or see how, um, see how other people think about this topic, 
do feel free to add your comments to this video and I will definitely see you next time. Thanks for joining me today.